Hello, I'm JW, and it's failed electrical products time once again. Uh, this particular product here is a multi-way extension lead, and of course it has the uh, plug here and one of these uh, ridiculous types of outlets where you can shove virtually any old plug in there. Now this particular item came from a seller on eBay. The seller is located in the UK, and the item was shipped from the UK, and the seller also had a fair quantity of these available for sale. But uh, just looking at the picture of the item, it's obvious that there's a considerable number of problems with the item, some of which, of course, can make it extremely dangerous. So uh, let's open it up and see uh, what we can find inside. Now here's the product uh, in the packaging as supplied. That is in this sort of uh, plastic uh, overwrap, and the back is just a piece of cardboard. Plastic being secured with these rather sharp and pointy staples, most of which are sticking out at various angles. So what we've got here is a uh, three-pin plug, laughingly along the lines of the uh, BS1363 standard, although uh, this of course is uh, nowhere near that. Uh, presumably a bit of wire here. And the thing itself, which has these uh, odd-looking uh, multiple outlet things, obviously intended for a whole variety of plugs to go in. And then of course you've got the uh, two-pin varieties along the top as well. Bizarrely it's got a voltmeter installed, some kind of blue covering of uh, purpose yet unknown. And uh, that's pretty much it, uh, possibly a neon indicator on this end. And uh, the whole thing uh, in the packaging looks uh, pretty poor quality and uh, mediocre. Now on the front of the thing here it's got a number of claims as to uh, what it may or may not do. As you see down the front here we've got the uh, four bullet points. So we've got uh, electric surge protecting device, overload protecting device, and then we've got independent protector tube device. I have no idea what that means. And then here we have uh, safe protecting door structure. We can only assume they're referring to shutters over the outlet holes, but uh, in any case that's a pretty uh, bizarre way of doing it, and four level security and um, other spurious things. At the top here I've got the name which is Astra on this one, although I've uh, had a quick look on the internet and of course uh, there's various other model numbers and names stuck on these. It's presumably some generic product which uh, you can have pretty much any old name and thing stamped on that you would like. Uh, this uh, dubious logo here says uh, ISO 9001 for the year 2000, aside from that being a horribly out of date standard because the current one is 2008. Uh, this means nothing because uh, it doesn't actually uh, have any kind of accreditation or uh, information as to who is providing that uh, standard certification. And uh, if you actually look around what it says on the thing, which we'll have a look at in a moment, the wording around the edge is uh, completely wrong anyway. Uh, on the back of the thing there's a whole load of waffle, most of which is probably wrong, which tells you how wonderful the device or things may be inside. And then further down we've just got that sort of diagram of the uh, various plugs and things which can be used with it. Rather odd section as well, uh, technical parameters. Uh, installation resistance 500 mega ohms, uh, rate of voltage 250 AC, rate of current 10 amps, and uh, of course power 2500 watts maximum, which of course is 250 times 10. There's no manufacturer's name on this, uh, there's no barcode, although uh, there's a large space here where one could have been put. So uh, really we don't know where this was made or who made it. Obviously they're ashamed of uh, telling you who they are. So just peel away the uh, plastic edges. I say most of these staples are protruding and rather sharp, so keep away from that. And, uh, so there are just the cardboard and the uh, mechanism of course in the tray itself. So again there we've just got another bit of card there with those uh, rather dubious bullet points on. Plastic tray, the other bit of card which uh, just for uh, amusement let's just have a look at that logo on the top corner. So there's a look at that uh, dubious uh, ISO logo. It's obviously fake, and uh, just check out the wording around the bottom edge. Uh, starts out okay, but uh, then it all goes horribly wrong. Now this lead has apparently been assembled like this prior to it being fitted to the device, because uh, to get it off you've got to pass the plug through here, uh, which of course is impossible considering the fact that you've got to uh, unravel it, but you can't because that's in there, so uh, perhaps the whole thing should pass through. but. Uh, once again, no, that's not going to happen, so uh, 
bit of a fail there. So let's just see if we can untangle it uh, and uh, hopefully get the thing actually open. Well, we've managed to unravel that eventually and uh, just measured the length of it. Uh, the product claimed it was 1.5 metres of flex. It is 1.5 metres long, but only if we include the actual adapter itself. The uh, flex is uh, considerably shorter than that. And the flex itself is a rather strange uh, type of stuff. The outer covering appears to be uh, loose with respect to the inner conductors, so uh, something uh, definitely wrong there. We'll just have a quick look at the uh, markings on the flex. So there we go, it doesn't really tell you anything. PVC insulated wire, 300 or 500 volts. And that appears to be the only markings. They're repeated uh, a bit further along the wire there. But uh, I say it does feel rather bizarre because you can feel that the outer covering is not attached to the inner wires. There's obviously some kind of air space inside, which uh, is definitely wrong. But anyway, we'll uh, cut that open later. Now the plug here is certainly of interest. This is uh, of the style of BS 1363. Unfortunately though, of course, it's uh, very far from it. Now, uh, as you can see, it's extremely small and there's no fuse in it, both of which are huge fails. The uh, pins here are too close to the edge, certainly non-compliant. The pins are actually sleeved and the earth pin is not, which I suppose is something. Some of these exist where they've actually uh, sleeved the earth pin as well, but uh, nevertheless, it's uh, a piece of junk. And it does have some wording on here. It says 13 amps, 250 volts, which if it was a BS 1363 would actually be correct. Pretty obviously though it's not. Bearing in mind on the packaging they told us this was a 10 amp device, so uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense either. Now just for comparison purposes, I've got a proper plug here. It's not a particularly uh, unusual style or fancy one, it's just a normal cheap one you can buy anywhere. Here it is. So uh, you can see the substantial smaller size of this thing. And if we just turn them around there, I see the pins are certainly similar, but uh, the sizing of them is clearly incorrect. They're too short, and uh, I don't know about the spacing, but i uh, put the two plugs uh, here, and uh, well, they're certainly not the same style. That uh, earth pin there looks rather fat, actually, compared to the other one, but... Uh, Anyway, let's just have a look for the width in this direction here. Right, well, there we go. As you can see, the uh, proper plug there with the uh, gold coloured lead coming out of it is uh, actually somewhat wider than the uh, other one on the other side. Uh, pin length as well. As you can see, that earth pin on the uh, nasty plug is too short by far. Not quite sure about the other pins there, but uh, nevertheless, it's a uh, pretty poor effort. And so obviously there's no fuse here because the uh, body of the thing is too small to contain it and there's no uh, actual way of getting a fuse out of there even if it did have one. So moulded on plug, fully sealed. This end uh, has this bit of bizarre strain relief affair on it and uh, that doesn't appear to be doing a uh, great deal. So before we uh, actually open this thing. I thought we'd just do a test on it to see if it does actually work. So what we need to do is place a pin into the uh, outlets here. Then we'll use the one at the end because that's near uh, obviously the worst case scenario. It sort of rams in. This clamp will then attach to that. Now the other end of this is plugged into the uh, testing machine which is just out of view of the camera. It's just up here. And essentially we're going to use uh, the setting just to confirm the earth is uh, continuity between the uh, pin here and the pin in the tubeless plug. And this will also apply 1250 volts between the earth and the uh, line in neutral. So uh, obviously that should uh, confirm any kind of uh, faults and things in the device. I presume that is on. So let's just press the uh, test and see what happens. Well, that's a big fail straight away because as you can see the uh, thing has no earth continuity at all. That's, uh, that's a very bad altogether. So uh, that's a huge fail. Let's just try it and switch in the other position in case some bizarre reason that was as it was. No, that's a total fail. I see the uh, red light uh, indicating fail and the meter over there indicating basically uh, the earth resistance is uh, infinity. So uh, no good, you might actually call that. So uh, fail before we've even opened it up. Let's just try it in this pin. God, that sounds grindy. Let's just try it in this uh, other pin in here. I'm sure this uh, will give us a very similar result. 
Yeah, as expected, there's absolutely no continuity on the Earth there whatsoever, which uh, that, that's just uh, pathetic, isn't it? So, uh, so the uh, thing has uh, totally failed. Uh, switch on or off, it uh, appears to make little or no difference. So as you see here, it does have the uh, brass earth pin, but uh, obviously it doesn't appear to be connected to anything inside of the uh, sockets here. So uh, that's uh, pretty poor. Now this thing obviously has failed the test, but uh, just for uh, amusement purposes, let's just apply a voltage to it and see if this dubious uh, voltmeter thing does actually work. So I'm certainly not going to be touching the device while this is happening, but uh, we'll just apply the normal uh, mains voltage uh, from the uh, testing machine once again, and we shall see uh, what, if anything, goes wrong. OK, well, the meter has moved to a uh, position resembling 240 volts, and the orange indicator at this end has illuminated. It's not drawing any current, which is a good sign. So there we go. If we turn off this uh, dodgy switch, you would expect it not to uh, energise there. Oh, right, so uh, at least the switch turns it on and off. Right, let's just uh, disconnect that completely before uh, it blows up and uh, sets the place on fire. So now let's just have a look inside the thing. And uh, as previously mentioned here, we've got the uh, screws on the back. So let's undo those and uh, Hopefully we can get inside very easily. So these appear to be these sort of cross and slot combined types of screws, so uh, no problem in doing those with a normal flat screwdriver. As I say, just before we take the cover off, we can just look at the wording on the back there. It says movable socket, 10 amps to 20 volts, uh, 50 or 60 hertz, and obviously made in China. So you've got two little holes there at that end, and then this sort of keyhole slot to uh, presumably mount it on a wall if you uh, wanted to do such a thing. So anyway, the uh, back should just lift off, so let's just undo the screws there. Right, so that's just a single moulding, nothing uh, inside there. Well, nothing apart from this piece of... Uh, red sleeving, which has been cut off at the end of one of the wires, but you know, left, left inside. Poor quality manufacturing there, for certain. So here I'm inside the device, and uh, Flex comes in here, digitally secured with a uh, bar style of clamp, and three conductors inside. Solid green, that's not permitted, it should be green and yellow. Solid green went out in the uh, early 70s, so uh, well out of date. And uh, brown and blue for the others, which are at least the correct colours. The brown coming in via this switch here, and then uh, coming out on this red insulated conductor. And that appears just to uh, go along all the way to each of the uh, terminals on the various outlets. And the neutral is correctly connected, and likewise it just goes along to the various outlets there. And the earth, uh, laughingly called, uh, is connected inside, but it's obviously not connected at the other end. And that just goes to each terminal in turn, as uh, do the others. Now here we've actually gone in for a much closer look. This is the back of one of those three pin sockets. And as you see, the terminals are just basically bits of bent metal. And the wires are directly soldered on, directly onto the back of there. Now uh, that's uh, a pretty poor method of attachment. And of course, if this was to be a loose connection, when you put the pin of the plug in, this will overheat and that will melt the solder, causing the connections to fall off. And the same over here, and it's the same for the earth as well. It's, uh, all a uh, pretty poor old thing, bodged together in the uh, cheapest way possible. That red uh, there on the metal is just a reflection from the plastic sleeving, by the way. It is actually a uh, shiny silver. There we go, as the rest of them are. Now, I don't know what voltage this particular wire is rated for, but uh, that insulation is uh, pretty thin looking, and you'll notice where it's been considerably distorted and damaged at the ends, where obviously the heat from the soldering has uh, caused it to melt partially. There's a nasty scuff mark on it there. And if we look at the two-pin socket above, we can see here where they've soldered on the incoming neutral, the end is somewhat burnt. There's obviously some flux residue on the insulation there. And again, it's all this sort of tacked together with solder kind of affair. Really incredibly poor quality construction. The sockets themselves appear to be just held in with a single screw in the centre. And in the case of the three-pin variety, you've got two screws. 
This uh, material here appears to be some kind of hard ceramic type substance, which is a uh, fairly odd choice given that uh, you would expect it to be moulded plastic or some kind of uh, phenolic resin type material. But anyway, it's uh, certainly a uh, type of vitreous or some sort of ceramic type material. This is the LED indicator, and I say it's just a standard uh, LED which uh, has been attached with these very thin wires. Again, it's all a soldered type of connection. That one goes directly over to the terminal, and then the other one here via this uh, tiny little resistor. And again, it's just bodge soldered on there. Notice they haven't even bothered to trim the length of the leads here, they're just sticking out miles. And likewise, over this side, great uh, flapping length of lead hanging out there. And uh, these, I say, are not secured in any way. If we actually go in there, we can just move that around and it will uh, quite happily short over to the earth or go anywhere it likes to. So, pour again. This is the back of the voltmeter, and again, it's just a soldered on or tacked on connection. Spare wire hanging there, there's that bit I uh, just pulled the insulation off of earlier, so again, no quality of construction here. The wires themselves are uh, incredibly close together, and you'll notice there's just bits of uh, melted plastic there and uh, kind of uh, residue of the flux of the soldering. It's a complete mess. So internally, it's a very poor quality construction. Plenty of uh, likelihood of uh, short circuits and faults occurring due to the uh, bizarre construction of these uh, individual wires all soldered on, all these joints uh, potentially could fail. And as you can see, all of the terminals are uh, not really held in at all. It's purely that uh, back casing which uh, has a little peg just to attempt to secure them in position. Uh, Polarity-wise, it is actually correct. Uh, obviously, the two-pin outlets uh, doesn't actually matter because they're plug and go in either way. Uh, the earth is in the uh, correct position and uh, line is on this side, which uh, is correct when viewed from the front. So line is actually here, neutral on this side. Notable the earth again just pokes out the end, they just haven't bothered to uh, clip the wire correctly, they've just cut it off at the end. And as we've also already seen, the earth isn't actually attached to the plug at all anyway. So I'll just remove that clip there, and this uh, thing just again pulls out of there. So this flex is uh, quite bizarre. Notice that these just pull out of here, there's nothing holding them in at all, and that is incredibly thin metal. So I can just bend that out easily with no trouble at all. It's uh, just shoved in there. So uh, if we just cut these wires, Yes, I don't really see what that's doing, it's all split and manky. Anyway, and the flex kit was just one of those plastic uh, bar type things. There's nothing entirely wrong with that, it's a fairly standard method of securing a cable. Now this flex, as you can see, as I said at the beginning of the video, the uh, individual cores are rather loose inside of the outer white covering. And as you see, there's quite a lot of air space in there, and then, uh, this does not uh, really give you an indication of quality manufacture. I can actually pull the uh, insulation back quite easily there. How this has actually occurred is something of a mystery. It's not as if the outer tube is made and then the cables are threaded in. It's generally moulded over the inner conductors as part of the uh, manufacturing process. But uh, all along its length you can feel that there's a significant air gap inside, which is clearly totally incorrect. Now the outer covering of this cable is incredibly soft. As you can see, I haven't actually scored that or anything, it's just pulling out no trouble at all. So uh, whatever this is, it's incredibly thin and uh, easily breakable. Inside it has this rather nasty uh, browny discoloration, which uh, isn't good either. And if I actually cut a section off, so we cut it up here somewhere, and then these conductors, as you see, just pull straight out with no effort at all. I mean, that's literally just the lightest of finger pressure there. And it just slides right out of the uh, outer covering. Here's a quick look at the outer plastic covering. And as you can see, the wall thickness is exceptionally thin on this side. It's certainly not consistent. And given the conductors are flapping around in the middle, it uh, really does raise the question as to what kind of manufacturing process could have actually produced something of such bad quality.
Now here we have some samples of the uh, conductor material. Now, as you can see, the uh, covering has this rather bizarre uneven texture. And see on the blue there, it's got these little nicks and cuts all the way along it. The brown one, although it's uh, not even consistently brown along its length, is sort of lighter on one side and dark on this side. And there's that weird score mark going all the way down. And the green one, which of course this shouldn't be green at all, it should be green and yellow. Again, it has this bizarre, uneven and textured appearance. Colour is inconsistent and uh, it's uh, very, very odd indeed. It's uh, certainly not what you expect from a uh, insulated wire, which of course normally should have a perfectly smooth and consistent colour coating all over. Here's the green conductor and I've just removed some of the outer insulation. These are the wires inside and uh, no, I haven't actually cut any off by mistake. This is actually all the wires that were in there. Now the scale here, this is actually one centimetre. These divisions here are millimetres and the small divisions here are 0.5 millimetres. So these wires are absolutely minute and even combined together, they're still ridiculously tiny. Now bearing in mind that the packaging of this thing claimed it supported 10 amps. There's no way that this wire is going to be uh, capable of uh, sustaining 10 amps for any length of time. And even if you put 10 amps in it, I can see it uh, melting and uh, overheating very quickly. So that's the green one. Let's uh, just have a look at the other colours. Here's the blue wire, and as you can see, it actually has quite a lot more copper in it compared to the green one, which is a uh, very bizarre situation. And uh, if we bring in the uh, brown wire, as you can see, it's a similar size to the blue one. So for some inexplicable purpose, they've put the green in considerably smaller amount of cable or wire in it than the brown and blue. But even the brown and blue are really at the bottom end of sizing. I mean, the minimum size you can generally buy in the UK is 0.5 uh, square millimetres. This might be uh, in that sort of area, but uh, even so, it's uh, certainly not going to be capable of supporting 10 amps or anything like it. Now I've just scratched some of those wires with a sharp object and as you can see they're now silver in certain areas. So these wires are not even solid copper, they're probably uh, copper clad aluminium, something else which should not ever be used for this style of wiring. And uh, so as you can see there, just move it in the light, the uh, silvery colour of the base metal shows through very clearly. So we have basically copper plated wires and so they're probably uh, aluminium or some other similar metal underneath. Now the problem with that of course is that aluminium, although it does conduct electricity, it does not conduct it anywhere near as well as copper and uh, for the same kind of current capacity the wires would have to be considerably larger than normal due to the fact they're made of a less conductive metal. And in this case of course we have wires which are far smaller than normal and made of a less conductive metal as well, thereby compounding the problem. Now here's a piece of the blue insulation. As you can see, it's got that uh, strange two-tone effect, so lighter here and uh, darker there. And you can see the various pits and irregularities on the surface. So if you actually bend this, it's uh, quite bizarre because it's almost like old perished rubber insulation, although it isn't rubber, it's actually uh, plastic. But uh, as you can see, it discolours really, really easily and there seems some little uh, splits and things opening up in the surface of it. So uh, a very bizarre material. And you see you can actually dig into it really quite easily just with the fingernail there. So uh, yes, a uh, very strange and bizarre material. Not the kind of thing you want to be using for insulation at all. Now what I've got here is just the uh, remaining section of the power lead. Just stripped off the ends here and I thought we'd just measure the resistance of this piece of wire, or the uh, conductors individually. And uh, for this we can use the uh, connectors here. This is obviously a four wire measurement uh, arrangement uh, with the uh, Kelvin clips or whatever you want to call the things. Obviously because we're going to be dealing with a fairly low resistance. Although given the size of the wires, uh, maybe not uh, quite as low as it should be. So. Uh, just zoom in a bit closer and then we can get a reading from the uh, resistance meter and see what the resistances actually are. Now what I've got here, I've got the uh, leads here just to connect to the uh, various wires here. And uh, these are four wire measurement uh, devices, one uh, obviously for the uh, potential on one side and the 
actual uh, current on the other. So that minimizes any uh, resistance in the wires, of course. So you're only measuring the actual uh, test item itself, not the uh, leads or anything else. Now, the uh, meter, which is up here, has a variety of ranges. Uh, as you can see there, so we start out at sort of down the bottom here somewhere, and uh, hopefully uh, we should be able to get some kind of a reading from it. So we'll try the brown wire first of all. Let's just uh, clip on there. And uh, obviously uh, do likewise at the other side. So let's clip onto the brown wire and see what we get. Right, well that's absolutely huge. And in fact, it's too huge to go into the scale that I wanted to use, which was the 400 milliohm scale. But uh, so we've got there 0.54 ohms. So uh, that's absolutely huge, considering that we've only got probably a couple of feet in length of this wire. So that's absolutely ridiculous. Let's try the other conductors also. Let's go in for the blue one. Bearing in mind, of course, that the blue and the brown appear to be uh, certainly visually far more substantial than that little green one. So I'm interested to see what that one uh, comes up as. Now, if this is a decent wire, these blue and brown should in fact be the same sort of reading. Make that to uh, level a bit there. Okay, so we've got what, 5.68, so 0.568 ohms. Well, I suppose it's uh, within the realms of the uh, other one. Now let's try the green wire. So visually, this so you would expect it to be uh, far worse, or in fact, uh, obviously a higher resistance, being it's smaller. So let's clip in there. Let's see what we get. It can't be right, surely. Although I have a feeling it might be. Let's just squeeze the wires, make sure we get a good contact. Yeah, so we're just sticking about around the two ohms mark for a wire of uh, probably about 60 centimetre length. That is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, 1995 there, just uh, seems to stabilise at that sort of reading. So basically 1.995 ohms. Well, that's that's just terrible. Now, just for amusement, let's just see what the thing can combine if we uh, twist all the wires together. So that's all three in parallel, which uh, also should give the uh, lowest possible resistance. In fact, these don't even seem to want to twist together. They're that bad. They have some kind of weird uh, other metal, of course, inside. So uh, what have we got with that? So yeah, the whole lot is, what, quarter of an ohm or something, if you're lucky. So squeeze those together a bit. Yeah, 247 or 0 0.247. And uh, so 247.6 milliohms. And uh, well, absolutely uh, as bad as I expected, really. Now, just as a comparison, I've got here a piece of wire of the same length as that other lead. This is actually single core, 0.6 uh, square millimetres. It's tinned, actually, as well, which is what has this silvery colour, but it is copper underneath, of course. So just measure the distance of this. Bearing in mind, this is 0 0.6, so uh, pretty small by any kinds of standards. So there we have it. That's, uh, what, 57 milliohms orders of magnitude smaller than the uh, wires in that uh, other piece of flex there. So what, 56.3 uh, or so, it uh, seems to be sort of hanging around the 56-odd uh, mark. And I say that's only 0 0.6 square millimetres uh, cross-sectional area, so uh, even by any standards, still an extremely small piece of wire. Now that's all for this particular video, and in the next uh, instalment we'll be looking at this horrendous plug. Obviously there's some issue with the uh, lack of continuity between the earth uh, wire and obviously the uh, pin on the plug itself. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.